First World Order Radio, final lead, final lead. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this is, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Back once again with Dr. Alain Bay on First World Order Radio. Let me bring on my co-host here, Brother L. You here? Hi, Dave. What's up, Dave? Yeah, Dave. What's up What's up with you? Ah, uh, if that everything's going very well with me, how about you? I'm doing well, doing well. Um, we got Wonderful. Brother Panic on once again, 2014. This is question and answering, dealing with the new <coughs> year rituals. All right, so for those that want to call in, make sure you get the call in number is 626-414-3535. That's 626-414-3535. Give us a call. You got the questions, you're going to have the answers. All right, let me bring on Brother Panic here. Peace. Can you hear me, Brother Lean? Yeah, we got you. We got you. Brother Lean, Brother L, what's going on? Uh, we doing good. How you good night? Doing good. Everything's everything, you know. We're going to deal right, with some right. stuff tonight. We're going to yeah, get into well, our which we, you know. Right, right. Well, today is um having to be um Prophet Noble Drali's um birthday, so oh, you know, okay. uh, um, we'll out the yeah. Easy so, so Noble yeah. All right, so that this, this so, is a good we list. Definitely wanna, excellent. Yeah, day. we definitely want to dedicate some yeah. rituals towards that. So. Right. Yes, sir. We we sure enough will. And we got a we got I got a little stack of them, little trick little trickeries we can get into. There's a couple of things you know we'll talk about tonight. Before we get to the Q and A, some interesting stuff. Um, first off, I want to give a shout out to uh, interesting two two folks. Interesting, my boy Charles. What's interesting about my boy Charles is that me and him was just he just used to live in my building in the nineties when I moved to Jersey for a while. All we did was just rollerblade, bike ride, workout. It was that, it was that era. So I had to talk to Charles you know, forever, you know, that that was just something that happened in life. Sure enough, he sends an email, let me get a panic pack. Now, to me, this shit blew my mind just to even see him involved in anything conscious, you know, just the way how shit works out. And he's full-blown, you know what I'm saying? He ain't just dabbling. It's like, yo, the shit you and the lean, you know everybody, Bobby and lean, the whole, the whole cast. 
so it's just interesting right. how shit works. You know, it's just interesting how shit works. So I caught up with him, you know, and, and we got a chance to holler. You know what I'm saying? That's my man. He was always a cool, smooth dude. But just to see in the future, you, you now you kind of understand connections. Me and him had a connection back then. It was it just wasn't time for consciousness. So as, now it makes so much sense, him being a conscious person. So I want to shout him out. And, um, you know, I'm sure he's listening. And um, I also want to shout out my girl, Kiana. Everybody everybody should know Kiana. Kiana, Kiana is a foxy girl. She took my class, and everybody knows she, she's real cool. She's from Facebook. And her birthday falls around the time of New Year's. So last year and this year, you know, she invited me to her house with her family. And so, you know, I want to thank her. She always has good cake, always buys me something for my birthday, like, She's she's really that chick. She doesn't kiss my ass, which I really appreciate. She's a real chick. Like you know, I, um, last year on my birthday, I went the door. It's like one eight hundred flowers with some goddamn um, fruit candy, and I said, "Who in the fuck is <laughs> would send me some bullshit like this?" But as soon as I seen this from her, I'm like, "Oh shit, Kiana!" You know, I ate the pineapples and shit, <laughs> kept the balloons. That's how cool she is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She's, she's the one. She brought the cake. You know, uh, uh, after we uh, after she finished the class, her mom's is mad cool. But what one thing I don't get? She said she was gonna play some music for me. You know, at the at, at the party, and told the DJ to throw a motherfucking candy girl. <laughs> now, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I don't know what I've ever done <laughs> to make you think. In my day and age, I used to get my ass on the dance floor to Candy Girl, but that is not the fucking case. You know, she's like, I had him put this shit on for you. You know what I'm saying? Fucking Ralph Tresvant and the niggas singing Candy Girl. I'm like, now if my little sister was here, you may have tapped into some shit. So I want to shout out and give a thank you for the invite. We had fun like we did last year. Like I said, she's mad, a mad good-hearted person and, you know, Want to give her a shout out now? We'll get into some rituals, but first thing I want to talk about, and I don't know if Aleem has ever heard of it. There's some shit called a humanzy. Have you ever heard of the humanzy? Mandy. No, humanzy. I'm not sure. No. Let me tell you, this is the funniest shit ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They tell on themselves. I'm watching um, Jesse the Body Ventura, who became the governor, who is now a conspiracy theorist. And conspiracy theories, even though we should be into it, we should be aware of it, but they're more the white man's civil rights. For white folks, conspiracy theories um, um, is actually what's enlightening them, even more than their fake Pretending to be uh, New Age conspiracy theories are because it, it always they have nothing else, so it comes down to what what what's breaking their constitutional rights. So so they have a show on True TV, Jesse the Body Ventura, ex governor. All these conspiracies, and he's putting down real live conspiracies, the towers and, and chemtrails, and he talks about the making of motherfucking humanities. Humanities are. Uh, Humans that are crossbred with chimpanzees, hmm. humanzies. Wow. Now, now you can go on YouTube and find Jesse Ventura humanzies, and you'll hear the show for itself. But as he, what's funny about this is as he's going on and talking about the the plot, the goal of humanzies, he just described the entire creation of the white race. It's it's so in your face. Now wow. he he talks about how they're breeding this race, they're they're, they're cross breeding them, and these monkeys will take over. Now, of course, this is the Planet of the Apes story, and he goes into detail about the uh, the testing facility. Um, the in the last the latest Planet of the Apes, um, that where they were doing the testing on the monkeys. He's saying this place is real. The place is called uh, Yerks, I think, or Yerkes, or something like that. It used to be in 
Florida. Now it's out here in Georgia. And in there, they're making real humanities. The idea of that same old conspiracy, uh, they're creating this super army, they're going to take over the world. But what they, what, what's going to happen is these humanities are going to get out and eventually take over the world. I'm like, well, this shit already happened. You know what I'm saying? Yakub has made the, the, the original white humanity on an island of Patmos, <laughs> and he got out and took over the world. They're, they're describing their entire story to a T. That's how you know this shit happened. So if people don't know, you can get the book, Making of uh, White Man History, Tradition, Traditions and Teachings, by Elijah Muhammad. I know there's another brother who did one too. That's a good one. That gives you the story, this 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 the story of the creation of the white man. Now everything else kind of lines up with the story, but there's no, you could say more than hard evidence. And the evidence that Elijah Muhammad gives, of course, people are going to say that this is something from a racist standpoint. But if you listen to white people themselves. When they talk about humans come from monkeys, they're talking about themselves. We don't come exactly. from monkeys. They're talking about the Yeti, the 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 uh, the Bigfoot, and the um the the abominable snowman. That's all their origins. Those are the original humanities <laughs> that eventually came as what we know as white folks today. So they're doing this ex- the same experiment too. Now we also know that genetic. Uh, uh, Tampering, genetic programming is not a new thing, even though they're presenting it as something that's new. That's how we created them. So when they're talking about these humanities, it's just nothing but history repeating, repeating itself. Now, in the 60s, they had a guy, a, a monkey, that they found that was odd, which you can find online called Oliver. Look for a YouTube you could Google Oliver the Humanity, but look for a particular YouTube uh, uh, video, Oliver the Chimp, because that's a little bit thorough. They show you all the oddities of this chimp, first and foremost, that he used to walk upright. Now, a regular chimp, we've seen that in movies. Chimps walk upright. Right. When they walk upright, they're bow-legged, and they'll tell you they can only walk for a certain amount of time. Oliver spent his entire life walking upright with his back straight and his leg straight. That's never been seen before. We talk about Oliver's nose protruding. His ears are different and human-like. Um, uh, he doesn't get along with other apes. He smells different from other apes. He enjoys whiskey and a good cigar <clears throat> while, while watching TV. And they show, they show you all of this. This is no mystery. They show you his whole phenomenon. Um, they, they eventually, his trainers who had him, who eventually sold him to a lawyer where they did all this genetic testing, they found a little bit... In, when when he when he was testing him genetically, it was very it was genetic testing was in his infancy, and so they couldn't really come up with nothing more than the fact that his chromosomes, one side was monkey and the other side was uh, uh, not monkey, but they couldn't come up with a definitive saying he was human in terms of the chromosome count. But 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 as you hear in the documentary, people talking, like they know he's human. And they couldn't figure this shit out with an offspring because he was attracted to women. So he was trying to fuck the uh, the trainer, <laughs> his lady. He was getting real aggressive. He said the nigga walked in the house and just threw it down, tried to hit her with a doggy staff. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was on this shit. So they're showing you a straight live humanity. You can, you can see this shit right now. So we need to understand if you was on the fence about the making of the white man, Watch that Jesse Ventura documentary and fly, study a little bit more about Oliver, and they, they're telling you to your face their origin because they're doing it again. Mm-hmm. They're, they're playing around with it again. They also go into, you also go find a documentary where Stalin in Germany was making humanities too as a part of the uh, concept of the super race they were making because the idea is that <clears throat> the ape will be stronger and more savage-like if they can control it. So, so and more dispensable as an army. And I've even heard tales that we've created white people as slaves, and uh, or for slaves originally. I mean, that's just another one of the stories that I've heard. 
which is another way of saying that is what they're trying to say now, that they are also creating these white people as slaves, these experiments. And um, so it's real interesting, but when you, if you watch it for the subtleties and what they're actually saying, they're actually telling their, they're, they're retelling their origins, which they've tried to hide so well. The only place you find most of that information is uh, from Elijah Muhammad, which people try to dismiss it and say it was just some black Muslim stuff. But everything else lines up. All right. this caveman shit that they, uh... yes, sir. Right. I was saying that that was the episode that was called Manimal, something like that. Yeah, and there's a, there's a Manimal, Manimal. They also call it Manimal, um, uh, something with the chimp human thing, too. But right. the most popular name is Humanity. But manimal, something yeah. manimal as well. They do they do refer to, to it as a manimal. But um absolutely. Right. And if you hear just the goals and the ideas of why they're saying they're doing it, and if you line it up with the Elijah Muhammad story, it, it mirrors each other. It mirrors as something that already happened. They're gonna get out and take over the world. Well that shit happened. You you get what I'm saying? That happened right. and now it, it got me to watching all the Planet of the Apes again, which originally was always taught. We, we, there was no uh, 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 filter on that besides that they changed the characters to white folks, but it was about the black people represented humanity and the apes represented the white man. And you really could see it in the, uh, in the last, the, 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 the weakest one that Tim Burton did with Mark Mark where they referred to house humans you know, they refer to them as slaves. Uh, they did this, you know, in every slave movie where you see white people sitting around the table debating if black people have souls. Um, um, they did that same thing in this movie. I watched this last night. And they, um, they, so, so they showed you that humanity was the black man. And, um, and this is pretty much what happened. Well, that's what we're on now. We're on the fucking planet of the apes. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You damn filthy apes. You know, each time I go to the store, <laughs> you see white people, it's like, you, this is a madhouse, you damn dirty apes. <laughs> and then, uh, and then uh, uh, in the latest one, which was the most scientific, which in June they're going to do a part two to the latest one, which was, the be- which was, of course, the best one, the most updated, with Caesar and him being the king. Somewhere along the line, I did a breakdown of it. Um, his eyes turning green, which was the green of Thoth. Um, uh, uh, there was just so much. He had a scar on his heart, which was the scar of Hanuman. He chose to use an Indian woman, which represented Sita, if, if I remember. But there was like at least ten other things I went through at the time that movie was out about him being a king. Now, they have a new one called Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Now, I think even Jesse the Ventura talked about this movie was a code because they showed them in the lab experimenting on these apes, which is, are actually humanities that they're doing now at the Jerky Institute in Georgia. And then he goes through all the paperwork and all the, and all the check with this guy and this source and that source. But like I said, more than all of that, it, you, what you hear is the Yakub story being replayed over. And that's the most important thing because people are still on the fence about this. I don't see how, but still on the fence about this Yakub story. Um, and uh, you, you, you can see it as plain as day being played out yet again. So that's real interesting. I think you should check that out. All right. So we're going to go into some rituals unless Aline has anything to add to that. Oh, no, no, definitely um to it. All right, so we're giving some rituals. All right, so the new year, I'm just going to give you some tricks. Really is um, when any time there's a new year, you just want to clean and get rid of a lot of old energy. And that's where on the mundane level you get the New Year's resolution idea from. So one of the most powerful baths, of course, is Apollo bath. I've given this bath out before but I'm going to give it out again because people are always asking. One second. All 
All right. People are always asking for it. I'm also going to give the Ganesha ritual that people can't train to get. Before we go there, let me say this. I had the idea of people emailing me uh, to give me show ideas. Now my idea, the, the better idea is please do not do that anymore. People are emailing me the most outrageous nonsense for the sake of emailing me. And uh, so I don't think that's going to work out. So don't even flood my email with that. This guy sent an email. I'm going to read it to you all so you all see exactly where I'm coming from. I'm going to try to skip over it. He sends me fire questions to address on New World Order Radio. But I got three questions. I know for sure the first one is something a lot of people, now listen closely, a lot of people feel but don't say. I heard you say on blog talk a few times about people just uh, wanting the lecture but not doing the work. Here's why. And now he's going to tell me, here's why. We all have heard the remix show where most of us want to get busy until you start talking some shit about Bobby getting straight up possessed and dealing with certain energies. And when this queen called you and asked you if you got anything, because something's going on with Bobby. Turns out the Terracotta Army is entering him in shit. Well, I need to keep it 100 with you. My first thought was, who's got time for that shit? Just real talk. Y'all are full-time occultists. Must be nice, but nigga, we got jobs and shit. Nigga, nigga can't be worth tripping cause some energy that, that's been fucking with. I think this concern is more so, uh, this, this is people's concern more, though, more so than fears. We don't doubt you get a kick-ass realization for it, but we have a lot, uh, a lot of us has got to be functional. Even dude who called about the panic pack and said he was seeing red and green and shit can't be no shut-in to do this work. You feel me? I've heard accounts of people going through this, uh, some shit after raising Kundalini. Even if um, they eventually resolve it, it's it's my thing. Uh, it's it's my thing is again, who got time for that shit? Laugh out loud, and not so much even jobs. Motherfuckers got kids. Now wait a minute. Basically, you telling me your spiritual transformation. Needs to be on hold based upon your fucking job. <laughs> based upon your motherfucking job. Okay, first and foremost, I don't remember telling people what they must do. So, um, and I don't remember anyone ever telling me that they're scared to tap into some shit. Why in the fuck are you listening to me? This work, let's be clear, this work is about you choose to do what you want to do. How do you tell me or even waste time typing to tell me that you don't have time to raise Kundalini? I, I don't know. What are you thinking, that I give a fuck? Or, or are you thinking that, that I invented Kundalini or some shit and I'm telling you to do some shit that I invented? This is an ancient spiritual practice. If your job or your kids get in the way, what the fuck does that have to do with me? You do what you do. It is nice to be a full-time occultist, but it's a choice I made, and it's never something I said you should do. You are here for whatever reason. You are here to do and get whatever you need to get. You do not need to waste my time emailing me with bullshit. And, and it, see, me doing all this talking, um, when I get emails like this, this makes me not even want to... Uh, uh, this is why you get these long hiatuses from me, because it's, it's it's quite frustrating to deal with this level of ignorance. Keep it to yourself. There's nobody here who's interested in in your work experience better than anything ancient. I am not the poster boy for anything ancient. I'm only reflecting something that has been done by millions before me. And what you decide to do, it's your path. So don't come with the ignorance. He's, he also asked about... What about Jesus and, and Gnosticism if there's no Jesus? All you need to do is read, don't text, uh, tax me that, read more. The Gnostic Jesus is a symbol that everyone is supposed to, it's, it's a level that everyone is supposed to reach. It's not a human being, and that can be found out easy. So 
I think I'm going to have to. So this is, I only read this so you understand. It's not my arrogance that's saying don't email me no more. This is the level, and this is only one example of the type of emails I'm getting. No one has came and said anything that's actually valuable that we can learn from. So this is flooding the email. So I'm going to make a quick note. No, don't give me no more show ideas. I, I'm good on that. We'll we'll figure it out. <laughs> my damn my damn job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I ain't got no time to raise Kundalini. I got to go to work. Are you hearing this shit? You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no time. Some shit that happened between me and but see when I tell these stories is so people who can understand the level of energy that you can deal with. How you deal with it, how far you dealt, deal with it, that's your business. I don't care about your kids, and I'm being absolutely honest with you. I can, I can fake you. I mean, like, but, well, the kids are the future. I don't care what you do with your kids, if you beat them, if you put them in private school. That has nothing to do with you dealing with your ancient information, and I don't understand, you know, niggas got you. And you're speaking like, he's speaking like he's representing everybody. See, we want to do it, but we, no, you're talking about you. See, I'm a little bit more ingenious than that. What I hear is fear. And I hear you being scared of being of dealing with spirit. I hear you being scared of dealing with kundalini energy. Why is your name Haru? Elohim. Change your name back to fucking William Jones. Tony Jefferson. Is that do you go when you go to work, do you go my name is Haru? What are you calling yourself Haru for then? <laughs> I'm saying the most basic I, I, I would love to raise Kundalini, but my motherfucking job at Walmart is too motherfucking important. <laughs> when I'm on the bus, you know what I'm saying? When I'm driving the fucking Madison Avenue bus, you know what I'm saying? I just don't want the Kundalini. Like, I'm the one who said, Kundalini or die, nigga. You know what I'm saying? And, and at the end of the day, everything I've said, this, this, is, this is your choice. You get what I'm saying? Everything. What we do, if you... If, if you Fuzzy about what we do is we bring information. This information is for you to utilize the way you see fit. You are God. I'm not your Lord or Master. I'm not telling you when to raise Kundalini, how you should raise Kundalini, and you ain't shit if you do. You ain't never heard me say that. <laughs> do what you got to do or do nothing. I'm just as happy as you with you if you was a hero maker. You my hero. You know what I'm saying? If you was just making heroes of pizza, obviously you still great with me. I don't need you to raise Kundalini to, to be so. Enjoy. You know what I'm saying? So you need to leave me up out of this with these uh, with with this tomfoolery. And like I said, he's only representing a lot of these same questions that I get. So we're going to stop this shit. My shit is already flooded enough with regular panic pack emails. And those who haven't gotten their panty packs yet, yes, they are coming. I'm about to send about a brick of them shits out tomorrow. So you should have them this week or by this weekend. All right, now let's get down to business. So, so I, like I said, I just wanted to um, say what it exactly was so you don't think I'm just being arrogant and don't want to hear you. Oh, and Brother Leem, I got your uh, package again. So I do want to thank you, Brother Leem, looked out. And sent the uh, second chakra package. So I want to thank you for that. Yeah, my, and, my wife said we had a mental for you not getting yours since um, DJ um, um, um took it. Yeah, she 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 robbed me. But this is cool. <laughs> I'm I'm glad. I appreciate that. He sent the second chakra package. If y'all don't know what that is, I talked about it uh, last week. Um, a lean. Among the many things that he has, he has these chakra stones. And everybody's always asking me for chakra stones, so here's a one-shop stop. He has two levels. He has the bag of chakra stones, which is a little bit cheaper, and he has the whole kit and caboodle one, the ones that are labeled in, in, in this hot box. And he sent the good ones, those to me, which is, is very much worth having. And But as soon as I took them out to uh, – as soon as I took the package out, Khadija snatched them and was like, ooh, thank you. So I can't look like a sucker and be like, give me. So Brother Leem and his queen sent me one and Khadija. So I do appreciate that. 
and you need to go to his website and see what they look like. Very powerful, you know what I'm saying? You know, so many things you could do with them to balance yourself out. And, it, and th- these type of things are good to have for the new year as well, you know what I'm saying? Because um, a lot of the baths and the rituals that you do, after you do them to clear out, you've got to energize yourself again. So should I, having your own chakra stones, especially seven of them, is actually a, a, a great way to go to and start to empower yourself like a battery. So you hit the lean up at drleanlbay.com, and I'm sure you'll be able to find these chakra stones among plenty of tools of the trade that he has. Now, this is a Apollo bath, and this bath I've given out a long time ago. I'm going to give it out again. It's good for cleaning. It's excellent for um, uh, 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 when you're preparing to do something, do something ritualistically. So for the new year, of course, it's always been great to do this bath. This is a real powerful cleansing bath. What you're going to need is you're going to need a can of goat's milk. And why I'm saying this is because it's very easy to get these items. Most of the stuff that I'm going to give you is fairly easy to get. You need a can of goat's milk. You need lime juice. You need an herb called Ruda, R-U-D-A, or Rue, R-U-E. It's the same thing. If you're having problems getting, getting herb, herbs, you can get them online at mountainroseherbs.com, mountainroseherbs.com. Very cheap, and you can get it in bulk. You need uh, kosher rock salt. You can get that at any supermarket. That kosher salt is in a big blue box. You need pomegranate juice. You can get pomegranate juice, easy. Um, it says holy water, but we don't fuck with holy water. We fuck with Florida water or rain water. Technically, you can get holy water at a botanica, but we don't ne- necessarily need to go that route. You could substitute it with with uh, your own urine. You could substitute it with uh, uh, Florida water, and you could substitute it with uh, rain water or, 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 or river water, sea water, something like that. And you need a white candle. Now, people may say urine yuck. But half you niggas is out there drinking your own urine, so I don't want to hear that shit anyway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that to me is right. <laughs> the next level. But uh, with urine in a in a magical bath, urine cleans off uh, a lot of negative energy as well. And we used to know that naturally because everybody here, don't fucking lie, when you was little, you naturally used to always just pee in the tub. You remember that shit? Because you subconsciously know that cleans your aura. So, niggas, you need to pee in the tub a little bit more often. If you get hit up with period blood, pee in the tub. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you're going to take a big, you know what I mean? <laughs> the water is diluted. You ain't going to come out smelling like, you know what I'm saying? You pee the bed or nothing. The water is diluted, but that adds in any spiritual bath, if you pee in the tub, it takes it to the next level. You need to know that. So with these ingredients for this Palo bath, you want to boil the Ruta in one gallon of water. Allow it to cool. Strain the liquid mixture into a large bowl. Add the lime juice to the liquid mixture. Listen, don't email me talking about what was that shit. You need to <laughs> download this to uh, uh, hear it again. So you want to add the lime juice to the mixture. Add about a cup. Eight ounces. Add the par- pomegranate juice to the mixture. Uh, add about eight ounces. Add the sa- Santeria kosher rock to the mixture. Add about one cup. Add the holy water to the liquid mixture. Of course, you're using rainwater, Florida water, or you're going to pee in the tub or pee in the mixture. Um, add the urine, or you can add a little bit of blood um, to the mixture if you're a female. Then you add the liquid goat's milk to the mixture. Light the white candle, pour the liquid into your bath water. Remain in the bath for at least 30 minutes. And it's kind of recommended about three days you don't do any magical work. You let it settle in um, because it's really cleaning off all negative energy. So now would be a good time to have your chakra rocked keep them close to you to rebuild that energy. So 
it'd be good if you have your chakra rocks. If you don't have a chakra rock, some sort of crystal or something to start building your energy, but you're not, you don't really want to expend no energy by lighting any candles or doing any magic work. The only candle you're lighting that white candle to cleanse. So that's a good bath. Uh, I'm trying to think of Bobby's bath that he recommends every six months, which is a cup of three caps of vinegar, three caps of lemon juice, three caps of bleach, three caps of ammonia, and a cup of sea salt. Put all of this in the tub, light a white candle, or light any candle that you desire, and this cleanses your aura as well. Um, So that's Bobby's. uh, Now, so these will cleanse your aura. Now, for money, I've given this ritual out before, and people have uh, still are asking, how do you do it? So I'm going to refer you to this because I'm tired of typing this shit. It's the Ganesha ritual. The Ganesha ritual, what Ganesha is a deity that breaks through obstacles. And, of course, we've created an obstacle. That's why it can be uh, you and money and why you don't have it is because you created an obstacle simple as that. Um, So it's not a reality that you don't deserve money or you can't get money. It's only something in your mind that you must hurdle. Therefore, it is perfect to deal with a deity uh, or an energy to bust through that hurdle. Ganesha is perfect for that. Now, one of the things that activates that energy is curry. Not the plant curry, but the actual seasoning curry. So what you can do is give your Ganesha statue a curry bath. If you don't have a Ganesha statue, get an elephant statue that represents Ganesha. You you fill the bathtub up, perhaps the sink, you you put curry, and you let the elephant soak in the curry overnight. Take it out, wash it off, do whatever, put it where you're going to put it. Maybe you're able to put a bowl of curry next to it or whatever. You just make... Ganesha and curry is seen. Whatever comes to mind with curry, do it with Ganesha. Um, if you niggas ain't burned that one out yet, a lot of people were getting a lot of money. When when I first gave it out, people were like, this shit is a miracle. I, I did that, got a check for this, got a check for that. My business did that, my business did that. So that's the Ganesha money ritual. Anything that you involve curry with Ganesha, he seems to like it. How do I know? When I went to the Metropolitan Museum uh, uh, with my girl, and once we got to the Ganesha shit, we smelled the strong curry. So I just thought there was some instinct Indian niggas around. But by the time we kept moving on to the modern art, that curry smell wouldn't go away. So it didn't take us too long to figure out Ganesha wanted that curry. And a year later, I didn't realize that I kept making her make curry. Like, I would go to her house and the shit would smell like curry. I just thought that's how her house smelled. She's like, no, motherfucker, you asked for me to cook it for like a year. And she said, my kids don't even eat that shit no more. I'm like, oh, I, I didn't even notice. So it was a whole year of dealing with just eating curry each time I went to her house. And all she had was elephants around her house. And soon after, the herb pack came into, came into being. So that's what that does. Now... It's going to give out a few rich, rich wows. It's real fucking pitiful. Nigga getting, oh, I got reading glasses now. That's terrible. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. That shit is terrible. <laughs> I read it. I'm so fucking old. The, the girl across the street knocked on the door and said, we got a leak. Can you come over? And I'm like, I'm sitting there. I said, like, y'all calling the wrong motherfucker. What the fuck am I going to do? Like, <laughs> yeah, so I said, you know, I couldn't. I walked, she, she lives on a hill. Shit, I walked up the steps. And let, her mom's crying. Oh, shit, I got to leave. I was like, hold on, I got to sit down for a second. I had to sit down for a second and catch my breath. Oh, did you call the plumber? She's like, yeah, I called the plumber. I said, all right, then. <laughs> Took my ass back down the hill. <laughs> I said, you need to find a valve and turn that shit off. Like, y'all called the wrong nigga. You know what I'm saying? I don't know shit about that shit. We just all be some drowned motherfuckers. 
So like, uh, but I'm old, man. This shit, I got, I need to come to terms with that shit. You know what I'm saying? So let me get these fucking glasses on. <laughs> this shit is fucking. I just thought that was nice to laugh at motherfuckers and shit. Let me give out this first one. Uh, one, uh, mark the pages. It is just that fucked up. All right. Okay, let me start here. And we're going to give out a couple of these things. So I'm going to start here. All right. Um, this is, let's see what this is, how to get, get rid of somebody. So you need to take the shoe of a person you want to get rid of, rid of. So this is good if you want a motherfucker out your house. Take their shoe. You find one of their shoes um, that you want to get rid of. This would be good for a relationship. You take it to the middle of a busy highway <laughs> or a busy highway, place it on the road, call out his name, uh, saying that you want that person uh, to leave. So that ritual, by taking their shoe, a lot of a lot of the shit that uh, you'll see on some crime scene investigations, I notice they'll mirror these rituals. Anything with their DNA their imprint, or their energy. Because all you're doing in a magic ritual is moving around their energy. So things become symbolic. Underwear, clothes, anything from their person. So shoes, when you want somebody to leave, is always some footprints, shoes, and sweeping where they walk. Shit like that is always clearing out the energy if you want some motherfucker out your house. All right, let me keep going. All right, take a black candle and say the person's name or write the person's name three times starting from the bottom on that candle. So um, there's something called pull-out candles, candles that you could pull out of the seven-day glass and write on. So starting from the bottle, uh, bottom, and I uh, mean, do you have pull-out candles on your website? I'm leaving to sleep. Brother Liam, do you have pull-out candles on your website? Brother Liam? It's probably in the restroom. It could we'll be, find yeah. out when he comes back. We'll find out when he gets back. Well, pull-out candle are seven-day candles. You can pull them out and you can write on them. Um, those are a little bit more instrumental in magic because um, um, you can put your intentions on those candles. So from the bottom, you want to write the person's name, starting from the bottom going to the top. And dress the candle with water, sugar, or with honey, or with a sweet-smelling oil. Burn the candle 30 minutes on each, uh, on each three consecutive mornings. So in the morning, you burn the candle. When it's afternoon, t- turn it off. Next day, morning, turn it off. Next day, turn it off. When you turn off a candle, you smother it. You don't blow it out. And this will help get a motherfucker out of your house. And I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to keep y'all with the uh, uh, rituals that help clear out the house as opposed to killing a motherfucker. <laughs> I'm not giving that. <laughs> that niggas be killing each other <laughs> like a motherfucker. <laughs> but in New Orleans, yes, will. right, one is likely to seek the help of St. Michael for evil or to burn a black candle in front of his picture while praying for the departure of a person. So if you need somebody to go out your house, you call on St. Michael. And it's re- that's real big right now because we understand the energy of St. Michael is Michael Jackson. So now that Michael Jackson has made the transition, you're basically calling on Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Tell a nigga, just beat it. <laughs> just beat it. So that'll get, the in- get a nigga out the house. Another ritual. Obtain a photograph of an individual and place it in a small coffin. Um... You need to find yourselves a botanica that you guys can use. If you can't find one in your neighborhood, you Google a botanica, try to find one close to you. And if you can't find one, there are botanicas on, uh, online where you can get catalogs and get these things. You can get um, a small coffin from a botanica. And, uh, and like I said, it has to be purchased for that specific occasion. You can't just use a small coffin. You need to buy it for this person's picture. Bury it deep in the ground, and the person will go away. 
Now for the real nigga who 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 uh who 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 can stomach this, take dog manure, dog shit, mix it with cayenne pepper, put it in a bag or another container, write the person's name on a piece of paper three times and fold the paper away from you. Put the paper in the bag and a container and bury it with the dog shit. So if you if you're interested in handling dog shit, you get rid of person. You get rid of get rid of a person doing that way. Uh, all right, another ritual. As a person leaves your house, sprinkle a teaspoon of table salt in his trail. Take your broom and sweep the salt out the house, calling his name quietly and wishing him not to return. So you. Symbolically sweeping the energy, you'll see that in a lot of Voodoo rituals. Um, a lot of Orisha people, they'll have that broom in the house because the broom represents a symbol for sweeping out old energies. Uh, keep your broom by the door. If you look at me, I have a little broom by the door. I have a couple of cinnamon brooms by the door. Every time the person leaves, take the broom, stand it in front of his trail, let it fall in the same direction that he went. So symbolically, you're taking the broom and letting it fall in the same direction. You don't ever want that motherfucker to come to your house again. All right, let's see where we at. All right. So they call it a trick. If somebody did something to you, now now we're going on to if people have done something to you. What we just dealt with is getting lazy motherfuckers out your house, energy out your house that you don't want around. Now, if somebody has done something to you, people often ask me, panic, this happened to me, and that happened to me, and this happened to me. So if something's found around your house, hidden or... or um. Um, what you need to do is take it to a river or stream or throw it in. The tri- whoever did the trick to you will go crazy. So let's say you find some magical shit that someone did to you. How you get rid of it? You take it into a river or stream and throw it away. And the per- and then that actually bounces the energy back to the person, and they'll be fucked up for fucking with you. Um, one second. Okay. Now this 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 is under the assumption that you understand the identity of somebody who's doing this to you. A lot of time people will know who is doing shit to you. Like my aunt did this or my uncle did that. What you could do is take a rotten egg and go to that person's house, facing away from the house, throw the egg over your left shoulder. Nine days, um, the spell affecting your home will be lifted. So you just basically taking the energy. Throwing their rotten shit back to them. Um, salt sprinkle thoroughly about the house and especially in the fireplace. Black pepper or a knife about the person or matches in the hair all bring dire uh, 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 perturbation to uh, to to the visitors. So if somebody comes to your house with the bullshit, your house is protected based upon the salt. Pepper and the knives. And I don't know who's gonna put uh, lit matches in their hair if you want to. Hmm. Um, mustard seed under the doorstep is another one. And right, that's that's about it. All right, another one is take equal amounts of mustard seed and flax seed, place them on the in the sifter, and place it on one side of your bed. So you want to mix the mustard seed in the flax seed you know, on one side of your bed, place a pan of cold water on the other side of the bed. Um, that will protect you while you sleep. Now, now, all of these standard rituals and standard energy things you can do when, but I would say if something comes in your mind where you feel you need to add something, you can go off the script. That's actually the better thing to do, to go off script, kind of add your own to it. But worst case scenario, you can uh, 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 you can stick to those type of basic bot- botanica energy rituals to get it done. Now, there's more. First thing, let me say this. I've added something else to the Panic Pack family. Um, a house cleaning 
powder. And what you would do is a, is, is a powder with some herbs you would put it in your corners. Now, understand this. Energy collects in the corners of your house. It, it collects and makes bed spots. That's why in certain people's house, junk is usually stored in one corner. That means you usually uh, start to store junk or dead energy in one corner or in a storage place based upon the spiritual energy collecting and being docile there. Most spiritual energy is docile in corners. So much so, that's why when your kid was hyper, we would make your kid stand in the corner because what it was doing was slowing them down. Or when they put the dunce cap on, they would put the dunce cap on, which is a pyramid, make them stand in the corner because the energy was docile when they were too hype. So your thoughts or anybody's thoughts that walk into your house actually go into the ethers and collect in the corners of your house. So you may walk in your house, and if someone is constantly depressed, that energy of depression does stay in the house. It stays in the corners. So there's herbs, there's things you could do that you place in the corners that actually clear out the energy. Um, in, in feng shui, they tell you most of the rich people's house, there's more curves in the house than corners. But we, as regular humans, live in boxes. And in the projects, they make, you, they make sure your shit is a box. You get what I'm saying? Because they know that docile and dead energy stays in the corners. So to the panic family, I have a new new powder that you can put in the corners that clears out the energy. You can also use this powder for protection under the bed. What you would do is put a basin of water under your bed and um, put a little bit of the powder in the water and the, your dreams, um, protection through the night, protection through your dreams. If you can't get under the bed, near the bed, you can put a little basin of water along with the powder. So email me at panicpack at hotmail.com and we can get into, uh, 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 you know, you can get in the powder if you want to play at your house and see what's up. And, of course, we've got the herb packs and everything. We have two more weeks of this class, so now is the time to join for the new cycle. So if you're interested in my class, now is the time to get in. And this is something that you need to do to change your life. I will guarantee you this. Like I said, you don't have to take my word for it. The people who have taken the class, not only have they given uh, hours of testimony here, they have, uh, we have given, uh, you can email them, you can email them and get testimony directly from them about the class and how it has changed their lives. But most people have called in and told this, this thing has taken them from A to B. So it's something that I would say is close to something you need if you're serious about transforming your life. If you're serious about your job, then you may not want to you may not want to send an email. But if you're serious about transformation, going to the next level, you want to do Panic Pack at Hotmail dot com. I'll send you the info. Now is the time to join in. And of course, um, Pineal Packs. Um, the, this is basically the medicine for your third eye. If you don't understand and haven't or uh, on the fence with this, you are fucking up. This is something that you can definitely use in your life to help you transform to another level in your, in your alchemy. This, these are all natural herbs. There are no drugs in them. You can either smoke them or drink them as a tea. They will open up your pineal. Everything is organic. It, um, what I've noticed for the three to four years I've been doing this is everyone gets a reaction. Usually the chatter when they, when they meditate goes away. They're sleeping better. They're, they're, people are healing. I've heard so many different stories because you never know what happens when the pineal comes online because when the pineal comes online, you get a flush of melanin. So that melanin is feeding whatever it is you need. So it's probably one of the most important things you can do with that herb pack, get in class. Email me at panicpack at hotmail.com. Like I said, there's new items coming. There's new oils coming. But right now what's available is this new powder to clean your house for the new year. It helps get it helps clean out the energy. And of course, like everything, all my items I sell very affordable for black folks. Like I said, I'm the only one doing it, so it piles up, but everyone gets served. So panic pack at hotmail dot com and uh we're gonna keep going. I'm, there's a couple of more rituals before we get to the Q and A then I'm gonna give out. These are Marie Laveau rituals. But like I said, it's very important this class, if, you, if you're trying to be an alchemist, 
if you're trying to go to the next level, this is something that is well worth it. Not just because I'm saying so. There's plenty of people um, who will tell you that who have already taken the class. We're already on the 11th cycle, which means there's a lot of people who have taken this class that can tell you what is done. There's nobody I've seen complaining yet. Everyone has great things to say, and I, and I, and I do open myself up if there's something they don't like. All right, so for those of us who are in business, to bring customers to a shop, use ammonia, nutmeg, and sugar in the water to scrub the shop. Ammonia, nutmeg, and sugar. Pour a little whiskey on all four corners. Customers will be the path to your door. That's a simple thing, and I'm trying to give out the simple rituals, simple little tricks and tips that I know work, that I've tried and I don't work. Um, to keep your boss from firing you, for those of us who don't have time to raise kundalini and need their job. <laughs> for those of us for those of us who just just ain't scared, but you know, they just they just ain't got time for all of that. So to keep your boss from firing you <laughs> write his <laughs> write his name on a piece of paper and bury it in your backyard with a chopped up red candle and a black cat's tail. Now you niggas ain't got the heart to cut off no black cat's tail. Me and Khadija <laughs> almost did that shit one night. Like, we seen a black cat in the street. It was dead. So I was like, yo, let's go to Target and get some big-ass scissors and get that tail. So she's like, she's like, fuck it, I'm down. So we went and we got the scissors and shit. When we came back, that shit was gone. You know what I'm saying? Get that, we was going to get that tail. I was like, fuck it, we're going to get a pot. I'm going to just boil it on the grill outside. Throw the pot away. You know, you nigga want to touch that shit. I'm going like, to boil all the meat off of it. I said, because I keep hearing about these black cat bones. You know what I'm saying? So, but from the Botanicas, you can get a black cat bone. They'll, they'll, they'll have them pre-made. All that shit, you can get pre-made somewhere or, or pre-bought somewhere. But, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm ready to cut off. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to go for mine, son. I just think of it like a chicken wing. I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to put it like it's a wing in my head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was like that shit. All right. <laughs> uh, old Marie Laveau trick, because everybody's old Marie Laveau because of Angela Bassett, um, to keep a man faithful. So, so, so you chicks out there, listen up. Anything. You feed them bodily fluids. That's rap. Titty milk. Menstrual, you know what I'm saying? Vagination. <laughs> you, better, you better get some of your dripping. Put that shit in the nigga's spaghetti. That shit don't work for me because I know the urine gets it all. You know what I'm saying? I went to this chick's house and just ate all the spaghetti I wanted. But I know I was going to pee in the tub later. <laughs> She's like, go ahead, eat the spaghetti. I'm like, oh, I'm going to eat that spaghetti because I'm going to pee in the tub later, nigga. I know the science. This procedure is common in Cuban Santeria. You may have, it may have been taught to to, to Laveau by her first Rudy teacher, Doctor John. Doctor John is the one who taught Marie Laveau, and who came from Louisiana, Senegal, via Cuba, where he became the most one of the most powerful Santeros. So any 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 of that, um, I'll do it. Uh, you know, uh, okay, make someone sick. Um, write a, uh, the name of a person you wish to harm on a piece of parchment. You can get parchment from the same place you get aluminum foil. Um, right next to the aluminum foil and saran wrap is parchment paper in the in the supermarket. Uh, melt half a black candle, make it a ball with molten wax by kneading it and rolling it around the written name of, so the written name is trapped inside the ball of wax. So you want to write the person's name on that parchment paper Trap it in a ball of black wax. Place the ball in a tub of very hot water. Sit in the tub by using a stick and toss it. It says for at least six hours, and of course, we don't have to go that long. Just toss it while you're watching TV, a nigga's name. But you want to put some focus on it in the beginning. Of, you know, and Please don't just do this shit just because, you know what I'm saying, a nigga drank all the Kool-Aid, you know what I'm saying? You're like, what? You drank all the fucking red Kool-Aid. Go get a black <laughs> nigga, nigga. Say, you talking about just do it for our true enemies, not other black folks. It should, doing this shit against us should be the last resort. You get what I'm saying? 
There's so many other rituals that I am. I refuse to tell niggas. We will be <laughs> niggas will just be fighting each other. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> so no, no, no. Remember, you just do this shit to people who ain't right. You know what I'm saying? That that that. I mean, it, you should. It, it should take you a few times to say I'm going to do this. You get what I'm saying? It shouldn't be like somebody piss you. It should be like. This has been going on for a year. You know what I'm saying? And 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 you see, this is more than just humanity. Something spiritual here needs to change. You get what I'm saying? And please be responsible with this. We have to be responsible with this. So so I'm giving to people who I think is responsible, and I'm hard pressed to do that because you see the type of fucking emails I'm getting. You get what I'm saying? And that dude is just a representation of some of these emails. Now, to be fair, because when I talk about this, 85% of the emails that I do get are positive emails. Let me say that. 85 to 90% of the emails I get is, thank you, panic, I've changed, this has changed, I've helped. That's what keeps me going on. And the, but there's always that 10%. I'm like, what the fuck was you listening to? You know what I mean? <laughs> but for the most part, it's about 90%. I'm gonna, uh, let me get that out there that this shit is working for. You get what I'm saying? Because then it comes down to, well, why the fuck are you doing it? No, there's, there's people who, I get more of these emails. I've been listening to you for three years. I've never said nothing. Of it. I just want to say thank you. So there's so plenty of people who do call in and don't ask for, for questions and whatnot are listening. The ones who are always active are the ones that, I don't know, fucking social group. And I, I think that's Jeff Moore. I owe him two crystals, which are coming soon this week, Jeff. He's in the chat room, and he took the class. All right. One other to heck someone. Okay. Okay now is to heck someone. <laughs> Where the piece of parchment paper. Remember, you get the parchment at the supermarket. Four thieves vinegar, then let it dry. Now, um... Four Thieves Vinegar is a vinegar that you can get at a Botanica. A lean, fuck around, a lean may even have it. But if he doesn't, you definitely could get it at a Botanica. You probably can Google it and, and figure out how to make Four Thieves Vinegar. It's probably apple, white, and something, something, and some other kinds of vinegar. I think at one point there was a way to make homemade Four Thieves, what they call Four Thieves Vinegar. If not, there's pre-made Four Thieves vinegar at every Britannica. It's a, it is a standard. So if you go online and say, I need Four Thieves vinegar, you'll find it on Amazon. if not a Britannica site. So you, you can get these things. Write a person's name you wish to hex using Dragon's Blood Ink. That's also another item you can get. You can get at Britannica's easy, and you probably can get it on Amazon easy. Hold the paper in the flame of a black candle, which has been dressed with domination powder, and patchouli oil. These things are um, also at Botanica. So at this point, you might have to reach out to Botanica for this um, for these things. Sprinkle resulting ashes by your enemy's place of residence. Your enemy's existence will be made into a living hell. To defeat an enemy. Now, this is enemy. This is don't just do this shit to niggas. You know what I'm saying? Because you feel gypped. You know what I'm saying? Because they ain't, they ain't give you your thirty dollars. <laughs> Take this shit serious, you know what I'm saying? So to defeat an enemy, and this is somebody who's really an enemy, not somebody you're just mad at. Uh, a cup of salt, four ounces of four thieves vinegar, again, sprinkled by your enemy's house um, by a path he will cross. Um, this will assure you victory in his other defeat in whatever it is you're doing. Or light a brown candle in the middle of a bowl filled with sugar, which has three tablespoons of four thieves vinegar that has been added before going to bed. The next day, what's left of the candle in the sugar go in your enemy's yard. So that. Cemetery dirt for protection. And uh, in next week we'll be back. I'm gonna give out more rituals. Just. Um, just give y'all something to chew on. Now, let me see. There's probably one more I want to give out. Nah, I don't want to. 
This is more about menstrual blood. A powerful entity to deal with is Pombagera. Um, for for you women to attract men, people always ask. Um, so if you're dealing on that level, deal with the deity Pombagera, P-O-M-B-A-G-I-R-A. And you can look her up. It's, she's Apollo, but more of a Brazilian Apollo. All right, so that's good for now. Next week we'll give out more rituals. We'll keep it popping because there's still so much I can give out, but it's so much detail and so much information. People are going to be looking back at this, so I'm going to give you a little bit, then we'll keep going. You know what I'm saying? All right, so I guess we can get into the Q&A. Let me see if there's anything else. No, we can get into the Q&A and, and, and go from here. All right, we're going to go to the phone lines. We're going to go to area code 718. Area code 718. What's going on, Chilis? How you doing? Hey, what's up, bro? Good, good. How are you? Good, bro. Just chilling, just chilling. Um, quick question. My question is in regards to Freemasonry. Um, I myself had a strong pull to become a Mason. And... I'm very successful with my own magic, very successful, but I still have this pull to become a mason. My question is, do y'all think that there's any benefit to become a mason? Like, I'm very anti-group. That's my holdup. And like I said, I do what I do in my own magic, but yet I have this pull. Well, let me ask you this. What do you think the, what do you think the benefit to becoming a mason is? I think that the benefit that may arise that I might get from it has to do with I'm I'm, I'm really like a lone wolf, so to speak. Like I'm not really then, into groups. Then, and then I, don't, I don't then I don't get it. Then why you want to join a group if you're a lone wolf? I think because I want to be more um, a part of society. I want to be more in society. Gotta do it. Like I want to get more involved in the social. And then do it then. Like um, you know, it's, that's a personal choice. That's not. I said. Uh, you know, I'm I'm saying it in a nice way as I can. Like mm-hmm. who cares? You know what I'm saying? Either do it or don't do it. See what you see what you like about it. If you don't like it, then quit. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, there's really nothing else to say. Like, you know what I mean? That's like me saying I want to be a Girl Scout. Who the fuck gives a fuck? You know what I mean? I either want to sell cookies or I don't. Gotcha. It's, it's, it's no, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's up to you. It's like, if I say yes, that means, just think of the power you're giving me. If I say yes, you must do it, that means you're going to do it. If I say no, don't do it, that means you're not going to do it. I mean, you're looking for a preacher. Gotcha. Do what's in your heart. You know what do you think there's a big difference between protocol and mainstream? Well, you should find that out and call us back. Once you gotcha. find that out, because that's something of your personal interest. There's over a thousand people listening to you. Nobody gives a shit. I'm gonna be real with you. I'm not trying to be rude. Nobody gives a shit. There's a thousand people listening. And if there is a difference, this is something you need to investigate. I'm sure there is a difference. I said wouldn't be named different. I'm sure there is a historical difference. And I'm sure you can go on Google and find that shit out yourself. You follow what I'm saying? And, yeah. and I'm trying to be I'm trying I'm not trying to be rude or or coarse or cold to you. I'm trying to put even in, in the in the in the cold way I'm speaking, I'm trying to put it in the perspective of how you're supposed to be thinking about this science. How you're supposed to be approaching your shit. You a man, at at the very least. Make up your own mind. You know what I'm saying? You don't need me to tell you or a lean to tell you what you should do. Then then tell us you're a lone wolf. Go howl at the moon. Then. If you want to be with if you want to be with people. You know what I'm saying? Put on a bow tie and do that. That's the best thing I can say. You got to remember, there's a thousand people who are listening to you saying, what's the point? 
They're not interested in that. That's your personal interest. So that's something you have to do in your personal time. The questions and answers that we're doing here, we're trying to make it, this is a show, so we're trying to keep it universal. I pointed that out last time, that people are actually complaining about these questions and answers. And I want to be able to keep coming back and doing them. But if nobody's going to show up because people are asking this shit to, in, in, to, in, to indulge themselves with stuff that they need to be finding out on their own, or trying for their own, because worst case scenario, let's say you try it and you don't like it, then don't do it no more. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. If you try it and you like it, then go full blast. That's the answer to that. No matter what I say, if I was a mason, I'm gonna tell you to be a mason. So I mean, all right, cool, good looking. If you have another question, I'm willing to ask answer that. But something a little bit more universal to metaphysics and the occult. All right, that's good, bro. All right, bro. Good luck. I mean, but but this is something you need to research on your own. I'm sorry, I can't help you. That's cool. Thanks. All right. Let me be clear again with these questions. (laughs) Huh? Go ahead, go ahead. Let me be clear with these questions. People are really still starting to complain that these questions are, 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 are personal to people that you can call on Google or you can this, – this is stuff you need to do yourself. Certain questions, certain things, another man shouldn't be able to answer for you. I'm not here to control your life. I'm here to give you information about, about metaphysics. So let, let's keep it on a higher level. If it's a personal question and it's something you can search for personally – then you're going to have to do that on your own watch. You're on other people's time as well. So let's try to just keep these questions a little bit more sophisticated. Or if you're asking a Masonic question, let's put it in context where everyone could benefit from it as opposed to some shit, a, a life choice. I mean, let's, you need to be real. Nobody gives a fuck about your life choice. You know what I'm saying? Because people got their own issues that they're dealing with. So all that just to say, Let's just try to keep it sophisticated. We want to answer questions that are more universally suited. All right, we're going to go back to the phone line. We're going to go to area code 470. Area code 470. You're on the phone. Peace, peace. Aru, Aru. Peace. Peace. This is Scorpio. Yeah, yeah, what up? Uh, some of the... Um, Mineral or solvent, what they call salt, that has 84 minerals. Gold is one of the minerals. Silver is also uh, one of the minerals. We've been doing it for about six months, which was sometime in July. So I'm thinking that my cells are changing over the next six months to the next six months. Sister's been dreaming about them checking our blood and they seen crystals in the blood. Do not know no better way to put the crystals in your blood by using Himalayan salt. So I think that's going to assist and alkaline our bloods to a whole nother uh, degree of alkalinity. After 84 minerals, the earth is consists of 99 minerals. So now we will have 84 of those minerals in our body. They say the, the salt, the solvent, is 300 to 250 million years old, and they're mining it out of uh, Pakistan. I think that's where the Himalayan mountains are. Wait, this, is this black Himalayan salt? Uh, this one is pink. Oh, the pink one? And okay. They, they even sell it at Walmart. Right, in the right, salt section. right. So we can put would you it take that? in... We, right, put how would you take on, that? we put that shit on everything. We replace uh, regular salt, <laughs> uh, salt right, with right. Himalayan. And we also uh, make an uh, alchemist solution that has a uh, one teaspoon of Himalayan per gallon of water. And we just drink it. Everybody, okay. that we t- everybody we told about this um, and used it, they're coming back just so happy. The, the Himalayan uh, salt is negative 
are you on base? Yeah, I, I, I talked about that already. We have a lot. Um, they sell them lights. I have about a thousand of them in my house. Look at pyramid ones and all sorts of Himalayan negative iron, salt rocks all around the house. And I've seen it in Walmart as well. Maybe I can put them on my Wendy's. Have you tried to eat it yet? Yeah, we I put it on my Wendy's. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, I've seen it. We, we bought it. It's really expensive. I've seen it at Walmart. You use it. I mean, it's good. I have so many things in here that, that create negative ions, though. But but it's pretty good, the pink salt. I mean, there's a thousand uh, configurations of how you can get that stuff. So if it's working for you, that's the bomb. We we also, uh, when we do our stone meditation, um, we have now took it into the dark room to do the same stone meditation. I found that to be a lot more powerful. It's like at some point you do it in the light, you get energy from it, but then you mm-hmm. get like sealed up, and then you have to go to the dark to open up another vacuum of energy. So it's like a balancing act. We done had helicopters circling us in different locations. We even went up to the Ottawa Mounds in uh, North Georgia, and they they have a sign there saying no rituals. Or nothing. So when we went up there, everybody cleared out the park. Four of us heard drums playing, and one other person didn't. And that's my best friend, so I know he wasn't lying about the whole situation. The strongest, most powerful location of doing a, a stone crystal meditation is on the beach that I found. Mm. And so that's a whole nother conversation. Cool. We 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 here, panic. We hear you. We here, and I thank you. I thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you're tapping in with some, bro. Uh, any questions? Nah, that's it. I'm loving the information. Thanks for the spells. Uh, we uh, upgraded our altar since the last time mm-hmm. I listened to one of your uh, Q and A's. So I appreciate okay. that. Yeah. Good. So what the brother is talking about is what they call Himalayan salt, salt from the Himalayas that is found to have one of the most strongest of negative ions. Positive ions are what you get from your microwave, TV, especially these L- these L- these new TVs, these LCDs, from your computer and all these manufactured things, and they shut down the system. Negative ions are found in nature, so around plants, trees, uh, forests, beaches, sand, and one of the biggest places is this Himalayan salt. Now, what most people have been tapping into is this Himalayan salt rock. We have one, two, three, about four in the house. And when I move, and this shit is so powerful, when we move to this house, these crooked-ass movers Stole one of them shits. What the fuck does he know about a Himalayan salt rock? But the nigga started asking, yo, what's that? I told him what it was, and he stole that shit from us. That's how powerful the energy is when you feel. And the salt rocks have the lights in them, so when you light them up, they heat them up. We have the tea tree candles with the salt rock, and they release negative ions in the house. We have one big one in the living room that holds down the whole house. And um, a couple in the bedroom couple on my altar. Now, um, and you know, I have one by my computer is a pyramid. The organs also uh, release negative ions to change it. So that's the stuff that you get from Jerry Miller that I've been talking about. And if you don't know who Jerry Miller is, he's a craftsman that deals with the organ and, it's, and he has plenty of shapes, pyramids, doodads, and so on and so forth. You can email me to get his email address so you can be put on the Jerry if you're not his friend on Facebook, Jerry Miller. And all of these things create what you call negative ions. So we did, we bought and seen and bought, the, they also have the Himalayan sea salt, which is only second to the Celtic sea salt. And you can get the Himalayan sea salt in a, uh, in a, a health food stores. But primarily, it's very expensive, but you can get them at Walmart. We've seen them at Walmart now, like, like the brother said. So with all of that being said, if you're interested in in, in kind of cleaning the stuff you were talking about, meditating, cleaning yourself out with the salt, that that's the way to go. If you have a Walmart, you can get it from there and you can get it online. So you're talking about what they call Himalayan sea salt. 
Himalayan sea salt, which is, so I'm glad he brought that up. All right. All right, we're going to go back to the phone lines. Let's go back, and we're going to get call at 614, area code 614, you're on the line. All right, we're going to go to area code 804, area code 804, you're on the line. Uh, good evening, brothers. Um, this is Felice, um, and I have a question about um, a person who may not be um, very much open to the spiritual ideas, but you can tell that perhaps maybe something in their personality has been, um, it's a little dysfunctional, and you're trying to figure out if someone has done something to them spiritually. Do you have any type of ritual that could be performed to um, give a conclusion whether what they're acting out is from a spiritual tampering or if it's just a natural dysfunction in their personality? Well, like um, I would look at it this way. Humanity itself is just is just insane anyway. So you could start there, you know what I mean? And dealing with spirits, or con- let's just say consciousness, may be step one in claiming back their sanity. So if this person is not conscious, you know, you know, I've never heard of anything that that I'm sure there is. If you if you go in and there's some litmus set test, but that's something I never was interested in. Is either the person is conscious or you you can't save humanity. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. My first guess for anything is is humanity. If they're not dealing with anything spiritual, just the mere fact that they think like a human, anything mm-hmm. spiritual can take them over. So most of us Christians and regular people, they are they're all possessed. That's why they act like they do in Walmart. That's why they act like they do with this road rage. Because it's all forms of spirits taking them over. They're just able to so-called function like we think. So they're just functioning, but when you take spiritual responsibility, which is what we talked about tonight, you're starting to clean out what you call lower energies. Clean out energies that make you think in a lower fashion. So if she's not doing any of that, technically you could say it's a spirit because everything's spiritual, but for the most part she's just acting like, She's probably just acting like a regular crazy human like everybody else. And then again, again, then again, it also depends on what she's doing. If she's walking around with her left titty out, it may be something else. You get what I'm saying? It may be something (laughs) that's obvious. If she's just always arguing or always depressed, you know what I'm saying, or something like that, it may be hard to say. It could be, but it could be some shit from another lifetime. There's so many possibilities. I haven't seen one thing that maybe streamlined it. There's probably a ritual somewhere. If somebody was interested in that, they probably could find it. But there's so many possibilities of of insanity, especially when just being a normal human is insane. Now, like I said, behind that insanity, you can still say it's still spirituality, but it's our normal crazy spirit. The shit we call on every day, call an African American, is is just enough. But but like I said, it depends on what she's doing. If she's going absolutely insane, then maybe it is something else. And and you can do rituals. You can do some. Let's say you feel as that you can do, and you're into it. You can do things to to help clean her off. You get what I'm saying? You can call mm-hmm. on spirits to do shit. So so if you really feel as that, then you should call on spirits or whatever you're dealing with. To work on uh, uh, work on what's going on with the person. Okay. If you feel it's that, but like I said, I wouldn't bet the farm on it because even what they call normal is actually insane to me. You know what I mean? Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, so. All right. If you want to call in to have some questions for Brother Panic? Call in at six two six. Four one four thirty five thirty five. That's six 
This is uh, Brother Jeff Moore, um, Eileen Bay, and Dr. Uh, I mean, uh, Brother Panic. I have a question about the Dragon's Blood and mm-hmm. the Dragon's Blood Ink, and that mm-hmm. is and that basically my I can just use my blood, correct? Yeah, you can substitute it with your blood. Absolutely, oh. you can substitute it with red ink, so you don't even have to go that far. Dragon's Blood okay. is more symbolic. They use Dove's Blood. Dragons, but it's more symbolic because there ain't no such thing as a fucking dragon. It's just basically red ink, I believe. May have a substance in it. I always seen them refer to it as dragons, but but I've always seen a lot of rituals that use red use red ink if you don't have dragons. But so they're basically saying use red. Okay, okay. But you don't All have right, to okay. go as far as the, you don't have to go as far as to use your blood, like unless you sign in a contract with Lucifer. Is this the same Jeff that took my class? Yes, yes I am. Oh, okay. Well, while you're here, why don't you tell people about the class, what you got out of it? Oh, oh okay. Well, what I had learned was to, uh, I had learned that um, creativity is, is a huge part of, of what has made my uh, spirit my, my uh, spiritual walk move faster. And uh, what what Brother Panda's class did was it it helped it helped put a lot of this information that I read in all of these books and um, it, it put it in in a more a perspective that I could understand and actually utilize um, for my everyday use. You know, especially after reading. Um, that book, um, the holographic sphere. You know, after reading that, it was like, "Oh my goodness!" Mm-hmm. But you know, but Pan, uh, in a brother Panis class, really just you know grounded me. You know, and yeah. ever since then, I've been you know seeing and experiencing you know great things in my life, which I never thought would happen. You know, and I'm and, and I'm just doing even more. You know, as we speak to yeah. you know tonight. So, um, so no, I, I would truly encourage everyone, you know, to uh, you know take Brother Payne's class. One, one, it was funny. I thought about this too, and I'll make it quick. Uh, what happened was one day I was up, uh, I was in my, um, um, it was one of my meditative rooms, and after I left, I had seen this. Uh, I was leaving the house and going back, but I had seen this black shiny beetle, and I couldn't mm-hmm. understand, you know, what it meant. Um, you know, I, I learned from Brother Pan's class, you know, uh, just if you see something, you know, in your life that, that you would consider abnormal, you know, go research it, find out what it is, you know, right. reference. And I did all of that, you know, and it came out and it said that, uh, you know, this is the, the growth of a God or, or the coming of a new God. And, yeah. and that night I had two of my... Um, pendants that I had purchased from, you know, Brother Jerry out of Atlanta. Uh, mm-hmm. They had used, they had, and I wore them, you know, after, you know, I had uh, done my original stuff, you know, I, I wore them, you know, to, uh, you know, help my body heal. And what they mm-hmm. did was they fused together and they created the, um, um, uh, the, 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 uh, the, not the waxing, but, but the waning, the waxing moon symbol. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. On, on the same the same day, you know, I had seen this black beetle of you know of the um, you know coming of a new god, you know, and so yeah. what I did was, but I had read that earlier, and I went back and when I seen it that morning, I went back and I read. I said, oh my god, man, this, you know, and again, you, after taking your class, it, I really started understanding and seeing even more, you know. So I do carry yeah. my um, book with me when I sit down. Now I'm watching movies and I'm sitting down yeah, with my book. You know, and I'm cross river. Now I'm starting to see. Now I'm seeing this, and it's just, it is a, seeing these things, and it is just amazing. You know, and my well, life I'm has glad changed. Because yeah, I, I didn't think you was gonna make. I didn't think you was gonna make it. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only joking. <laughs> Jeff was. I, I kind of did like in the class. He was a cool, patient dude. 
that's excellent. This is the first time I've gotten a chance to talk to you since you took the class. You took the class about three cycles ago. Oh, so okay. this is the first I'm yeah, finding. Yeah. This is the first I'm actually, if you notice, this is the first I'm actually talking to you to find out what it did for you as well. And um, oh, that's good it, to hear. I, it, that that makes it worth it. So when I get an email like I got today, when I hear this, it, it makes it worth it. You get what I'm saying? If I only got the type of email that I got today, you know what I'm saying? This would be done. But hearing like, yo, this changed and I can see this now. That's what, if it only is one person, that makes the difference for me. I'm glad to see you that, you know, this shit is working out. So that's that's uh, that's that's excellent. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm just glad to hear. Especially because you was a real cool guy. You was a patient. You was real fun. So when, I, when a, a guy with a good heart like you, you know what I'm saying? I'm, who who uh. You know who this shit is working for. You know I'm just happy to hear it though. Really, I am. Oh yeah, man. And it's and it's even and it's even. I mean, everything that I'm doing in life has has changed. You know, I yeah. I, I call it teleporting to work. It, you know, it takes me yeah. about 45 minutes to to drive to work. I've been getting there 15 minutes, sometimes nine wow. minutes, 10 minutes. You know, also That's you know right. I. Uh, yeah, you know, and also, um, like, you know, there's a lot of problems and employee issues at my job. Well, I don't have those anymore. You know right. what I'm saying? Everyone else around me does, but not me, you know. You and go. so, and that and that is because, you know, um, you know, when, after we did a class, I was like, oh, okay, okay, all right, okay. Well, let me go ahead and get rid of that fear factor. Yeah, you, know? you know, so I'm glad you brought that up because that's the funny shit when this guy's emailing me telling me, how more important his job is than the spirituality, I'm telling you, you get into this shit and your job becomes easy. That's the funny <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I, I didn't even think about that. Like, well, for, I was into this shit. When all that shit was happening, I was working a regular job. Full-time occult is my ass. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. so your job becomes almost invisible. Like, the man, you know what I mean? It, come to think of it, you know what I'm saying? My shit became yeah. invisible. It became a cinch now. Like 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 I said, it was like that. Like you said, it was like it felt like forever going to work, hours just to get there because you 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 feared going in. Now it's like fifteen minutes to get there before you look up. The day is over. It's like it didn't yeah. even happen. You still doing? It's just like I, I can't stand these coward ass niggas sending me these emails and I almost ask if I'm the one. I'm the guy who said you know I'm the ancient bad Kundalini guy. Oh you know this is this is coward shit. You need to call it what it is. I would respect somebody emailing me on Pang. I got a little bit of fear about doing this. All right, let's get down to the let's get down to the nitty gritty. You gotta lose that fear. Don't front like we would do this, but we like what we? You're the only one saying this. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm yeah, glad you guys yeah. bring that up. That your job actually gets easier. My job actually got easier when I got into the spirituality shit. Let me tell you, I, I used to work in IT. As soon as I got with Ogun, this is the shit that happened. They switched. Uh, uh, we started getting our tickets, our, our computer calls out of Florida. They mm-hmm. started centralizing it. So now everybody's just is fucked up because we used to have departments. Now everybody's just doing everything. How it went down was there was a freeze where they wasn't giving us no tickets while they was working this shit out for an entire year. I was just going into work whenever I wanted to. I would go in, have have my boy sign like eight, nine, ten the signatures on the time slip. And just put in whatever hours I wanted to. I was rocking with this shit close to a year on this job. I'm like, I ain't telling nobody, I want none of this to be fucked up. Just overtime like a motherfucker. For a year they didn't know what to do. That's when I was fucking with spiritual shit. On the job. All that shit. See, once you deal with the spiritual shit, life becomes a cinch. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? See, we first you need to stop looking at it like it's your regular life versus spirituality. Because then just the fact that you have the separation is telling me that you see it as something you do in a social group. You know what I'm saying? You emailing mm-hmm. me under Haru, but your name is really Billy Johnson. And you living like Billy Johnson. And Billy Johnson is more important. Uh, no, 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 no. This, this ain't got nothing to do with your kids or your job. 
This has everything to do with your transformation. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's, it's obvious you do what you're going to do. You don't be at work in trance. Who the fuck is gonna, who, who's going to do that if that's what you got to do? But the idea is you get into this, and, and, and since everything is spiritual from the from its core, all the human shit follows. Your jaw, so, so that's how I know you tapping into this real shit because your humanity is starting to follow it. Your humanity is getting sweeter. You get what I'm saying? Instead yeah. of walking around the planet with a fucking attitude, I hate being human. Cut it out. You wouldn't have been, you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't have been born then. There's a reason you're here. Live it out. Mm-hmm. You, you know, also, what the I idea did. of magic yeah. is the concept of living it out in the most powerful, the most comfortable way you can possibly do it. Yeah. Under also, the circumstances. Yeah, also what I did was I set my desk up. I set, an altar, I set my desk up at the altar. <laughs> and and let me tell you, that that keeps a lot of negative energy away and right. any other problems and issues from other people, you know, so. Right, you like put I, a crystal up in that motherfucker and you're good to go. Yeah, stuff, you know. That yeah. Crystal, the asshole stay away from your desk. Hey, come on, we have her a job. Goddamn chimney sweep. <laughs> yeah. I can't so, believe a nigga said that shit to me. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, I, you know, I, I, I understand, but he, he, he hasn't, he hasn't grown yet, so. Right, this is what it is, and you know, you know, all I ask is not to be involved in such tomfoolery. I want to hear the story of somebody doing something successful, not for me, but by their standards. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. By your standards, so that you know, it was good to hear. You know what I'm saying, I'm glad you was able to share that. It's the first I've heard. I didn't know how you reacted to the class, so I'm glad it's working for you, brother. <laughs> well, I, 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 you know, I have even more, man, but because you know, I, I was still transforming and still moving forward, and you know, so you know, I was having issues with my wife, and we were separating, and all that good stuff, man, and all that. After I finished the class, and I did, um, and I just, you know, went within. And got rid of that fear, and I just started saying, right. like, you know what, guys, I'm going to work with you, you know. And I was like, spirits, because I was working with uh, fairies right before your class. And right. my, I'm telling you, man, my whole life changed. Like, it just changed, not overnight, but it, it changed, and I actually noticed. And so my wife and I are back together, you know, things are even better. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, you know, I put all that human shit aside, and I just was like, well, I'm going to work on my spiritual walk and transform yeah, myself, you, leave my kundalini, all that. And I'm telling you, man, this, my mom is this, this class is geared toward giving black people the tools that they need. What I see, what I notice is a lot of black people have the information, and I told you this in class. Every question I asked, somebody had some sort of answer. But when I would say, well, now explain to me what it means. That's mm-hmm. when you hear everybody get quiet. So everybody knows the information. What are your chakras? Wheels of light. Uh, vortexes. What's a vortex? Uh, what's a wheel of light? Uh, you know what I'm saying? That's where the earth started coming in. So, so though we know the information, we don't know how to use it practically. And that's, what, that's where the class comes in. I show you how to make practical applications of the shit you were doing anyway the shit that you were fucking with anyway, how to make it work for your ass. Because at the end of the day, I get the emails and I can see you heard me, you heard what I said, but you don't know how to make it work for you. And so, so like what I hear you saying is, and what I hear most people saying is, after I took the class, all that shit I was dealing with, now I know how to make, put that shit in effect, which is a different story. Which is a different yeah. story. I know how to put it in effect. I know how to now make Kundalini work for me instead of work against me. This is working against you. I know it's supposed to be raising Kundalini. How do I do that? What's going to happen with that? What? Yeah, that's all that fear and, 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 and un, you're not sure of yourself. So once I tell you how, once I make it practical, once I make it easy, once I make you sure of yourself, people are like, oh, I was doing this shit anyway. Yeah, now you just expand on what you were doing, not what I say you should be doing. If you were doing it anyway, I'm going to show you how to explain on what it is you already are. Half the shit I explain, I explain niggas was doing it anyway. I explain the science through shit that you did all your life any goddamn way. How to invoke deities and shit you was doing anyway when you had a fucking action figure. When you mm-hmm. had a dog, remember? Mm-hmm. So, um, 
I explained to you, you were doing it anyway. Now you need to do it Why you were doing that. The same way I told you tonight, you were peeing in the tub your entire life. Now I'm telling you why you were doing that. That's a, um, that's a different, a whole different animal. Well, you understand what you're doing, so it gives you the confidence to do it anyway. And, and somebody's asking about fear, you go beyond the fear because you find out that's the fuck you was doing anyway. So there's nothing new to get into that you should be scared of that you weren't doing already. So there's no new ground that you need to cover. You get what I'm saying? That's, that's the misconception that you're going to do something that you've never done before. I'm going to show you, you know, you was doing that already. You just didn't know that's how you raised Kundalini. You just didn't know that you need to take what you're doing already and expand that. You don't, you don't need to know that. That's it. I, there's a couple of times on the shot to say, well, you know, you're already doing it. And if you know you're already doing it, then that's another way of saying, what is there to be scared of? So you can get, so if somebody's asking about the fear in the chat room, you can get rid of fear easily when you understand that you're not stepping into nothing new. Fear is just a just just an illusion about something that you don't understand or yeah, something that you're ignorant of. So once you take my class, I, I explain to you how you're not actually ignorant to these processes. And you could be on this level and the other guy could be on that level or this guy could be doing that thing or and this girl could be doing that thing. But if we t- whatever subject we're talking about, I'm going to show you still the commonality even though this person may walk around with robes on and this one may walk around with a suit and tie on, I'm going to show you that one is not a different level. It's just different ways of accomplishing the same thing in your same thought process. This magic and our cult science is meant to mimic the blueprint of how you think. What's, you should be scared of the what the fuck you was taught in Western America. That's the scariest shit. Your logic and you're yeah. thinking, that's the scary shit. You know what I'm saying? Go mm-hmm. Get back to your natural, magical apparatus should be the most comfortable thing you could do. It's scary to me when a nigga go, I got a job, nigga. That's why I can't raise Kundalini. That, to me, is fucking scary. You know what I'm saying? This is yeah. your shit. You know what I'm saying? That, to me, is fucking ridiculous and scary. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, so what, what's normal to me is your, your your natural black way of thinking, turning grits and fish into a to an exquisite dish. Ain't nobody scared of that shit. You know what I'm saying? It was the same form of alchemy. You know, the same form of alchemy. You see, somebody said my question is techniques for accessing and recording the Akashic records. I've gotten to the point where uh, I used to read books. And, uh, this um, I cannot read. Um, to get into the Akashic Records um, is actually, uh, you just could form meditations to go into your DNA. The Akashic Records is nothing but reading your DNA. And it's nothing but deeper in the subconscious mind. So you just have to find a technique that gets you deep, deep in that zone. One of the ones, uh, seeing your, your mind is elevated going down, down, down um, into a library deep in the darkness. I mean, whatever it is, See, you have to look at uh, your meditation as a movie, but it's a movie that uh, you can uh, keep focus on. You get what I'm saying? And um, where, whereas, uh, how can I say it? Like, uh, you got to be able to be able to stick with the story. So it has to be something easy for you. So for me, let's say walk into the forest, maybe something that's complex for me. And each time I try to do it, I, my mind keeps wandering. So I shouldn't do that, but maybe walking on the beach, I can keep my attention there longer. So you have to find a story or a movie or a symbolic concept that keeps your mind there. Walking down a long flight of stairs, taking the elevator down, flying down, falling down, something that's going deeper in the hole till you eventually reach a destination. The destination, of course, most obvious would be a library. See yourself at the library and that you're picking up books. So what you're doing is is physically taking your mind into a movie script in there. Then eventually you'll start getting wiser and wisdom and ideas will come because you're actually tapping into Akashic because you're programming your mind to go into Akashic records. All of this stuff is from the realm of imagination. All this stuff is from the realm of uh, uh, creation. All this stuff is from the realm of uh, uh, 
of your intention in in you're choosing the path. You're choosing the method. There's no method that's written in stone that is the way. There's some that are easier that are written in stone, but there's no either there's no such thing as my way or the highway. It's about what works for you. So if Superman is your thing, put on a cape and fly to your costume record. As long as you can keep focused in that. Don't look for nothing immediately because what you're doing is we've gotten so logical in our thinking that we cut ourselves off from the process so we have to do things like exercise to bring ourselves back there. So it's all from the realm of your imagination. And I'm sure you heard that before. It's from the realm of imagination. So you need to be able to imagine yourself seeing the cosmic record. There's a statement called you fake it until you make it. And that's a deep occult statement because what they're trying to tell you is that's the process. You act as if, and then as then it will start to manifest. So the movie What Dreams May Come. The movie What Dreams May Come is really just about more about the astral world than anything else. And the idea that your thought now reigns supreme when you don't have a physical body. So without a physical body, your thoughts now will become how you make things uh, uh, manifest. And this happens in the astral world, which is still a part of the illusionary world. So you are actually, this, 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 though the Akashic records are real, it's the same way DNA has a spiritual aspect and it has a physical aspect. You, you know, you and your girl get together and there's a mixture of the chromosomes, you have a physical DNA connection of the two, the double helix, then there's a spiritual DNA connection where the attitude may be like the father or the attitude may be like the mother or the personality based upon the spiritual aspect and certain uh, genetic traits. So just like it has levels, uh, uh, the Akashic Records has levels as well. So um, the library mimics it on planet Earth, and then the information in the DNA um, in the spirit world. So you have access to the DNA in the spirit world, your own DNA. So that's the whole idea. And uh, like I said, what dreams may come is a representation of a higher world that still part of the illusionary world because you're still creating things that you've seen in third dimension. So you'll, you'll be accessing a tree. You'll be accessing things that you access down here, not accessing concepts that go beyond here. So the, so the astral world is also a part of the illusionary world. You can find that out clearly in Gnostic writings that Yal the Broth created uh, the firmament or the physical world and the astral world to sit on as his throne. And, um, you know, and Gnosticism is nothing but the uh, mystical version of Christianity. But later, the characters and cast of Christianity that we know today show up as physical people. But in Gnosticism, they weren't talking about physical people. They were talking about some symbols. So Jesus Christ is uh, well spoke of in Gnosticism, but Jesus Christ represents a title in Gnosticism meaning you become the Christios. And this is talking about someone who's conscious. You become the Christios. You become the Christ. In Gnostic thought, everyone um, has the ability, or I guess most everyone, has the ability to become the Christ. Later, later day, Constantine has taken that concept and said, well, it was one man. And you can find all of that in Walter Williams' book, The Historical Origins of Finding in other books, but uh, in that one, uh, that's where a brother is going in hard, you know, on, on that on, on that way. He gives a lot of detail. Let me see. Yeah, Alright, I guess we can go back to the phone if Aleem is there. All right, we're gonna go to area code three four seven. Area code three four seven, you're on the line. What's up, Brad? Hello? Brad was in class too. I'm sorry, I see you, Brad. Brad was in the same class as Jeff. What's up? I'm sorry, brother. 
What's good? Uh, peace. Aline Bay and Brother Panic. What's popping with y'all? What's up, brother? Hey, you're doing good, huh? Yeah, now, um, you know, I'm kind of new to the whole metaphysics and magic thing. You know, I'm trying to get my weight up, you know. So I've been, like, browsing YouTube, peeping a few Bobby Hemmings videos, panic. I've been watching some of yours. Um, So I got a question that probably a lot of brothers could get something out of this if you're able to address it at this moment. Um, I was watching a joint from, like, a Bobby Hemmings joint from probably, like, 2005, 2006. And, um, panic, you were on there. You were on there, and you were talking about how um, you did, like, a ritual and you did it, like, at night, and then the next morning, and from then after, you was just, like, a tick magnet. You was just getting mad. Oh, no, let, let me, yeah, let me, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, because niggas done created so yeah. motherfucking many mythologies about that shit. This is what yeah. happened. Y'all getting it straight from the horse's okay. mouth. So, mm-hmm. at the time, I was into metaphysics lightly, nothing occult. Yeah. Um, so, I was, a, I was an avid reader, um... I, n- nothing magical yet. So I'm watching Bobby Hemmer tapes, and he, he's doing a tape on this love tape, this goddess tape. And everybody was always talking about this tape is the short shot shit. So I finally got a copy and watched it. So subconsciously, right before I went to bed, I said, um, fuck all this bullshit. I said, I just want to know the secrets of the goddess. I don't know why I said it. I don't know what the... There was no magical motivation that I consciously knew of. Let me say that. I, said, I just want to know the okay. secret of the goddess, hella high water, whatever you got to show me. Because I was getting frustrated looking at all these fucking tapes. They're telling me this is the tape. Like, this, this looks like another tape that I've been watching. So I was, went to sleep. Yeah. At this time, I was still doing the computers. And I used to have this mm-hmm. job where we worked from 2 p.m. to, like, 1 a.m., 12 hours. It was a real easy job. Yeah. I sat in the call center, and I just answered calls. So I used to read all day until the phone rang. So it was, so, but it was like, 11 hours. So I'm going to sleep. An hour later, I wake the fuck up with hives all over me, scratching mm-hmm. my motherfucking ass off. So I'm like, it must have been the fish. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but now... As soon as I went into work, now it may not seem like nothing, but see, I was since I was in IT, I was on the web when the shit started up, when there was only like five websites. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers was on Windows 3.0. So I start, I seen the whole internet grow, and uh, so I remember when Black Planet came about, and at this time when I was on Black Planet, everything was. Uh, do not meet anybody from the internet. They will cut your ass up and eat you. So, so nobody yeah. was meeting nobody. There was no fucking on no internet. So for years, I ain't been on no black planet. I was get my study on, get my network shit. I ain't did none of that. So now, nigga, on my job is like black planet is the shit. And so I got an account from before. Signed on and from sun up to sun down, chicks was getting at me. And, the, and the, the thing back then was, what's your Yahoo? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah. what the fuck is all of this? It was this piles and piles of shit. So it didn't occur to me that the night before I asked for the goddess to come. Mm-hmm. And when I tell you, it was just pussy central. I, and to me, this was some new hot shit. Meeting somebody from the internet and getting pussy? Oh, Lord. You know what I'm saying? I still was going, I'm still at the level going to the club. So this shit was some new shit. Yeah. So it was more, so it started to occur to me what was happening. Then I started noticing, like, the chicks that I was fucking was, look, like, like, they were, like, women that I knew who were dead. Like, she reminded me of her. She reminded mm. me of this. So it's, it's, I could, not knowing it then, it was these spirits that was coming through. And shit was happening. A lot mm. of shit was happening. So, so people took it as, like, I did a pussy ritual and got pussy. Nah, it it was I I just blatantly asked for feminine, and that's how it came. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so that was wow. like unique to your experience. You asked for the goddesses exactly. uh, exactly. to talk to you, exactly. and that's just how Most she people, communicated. Exactly. Exactly. That's how it came, and that's what took me into deeper consciousness. That type of thing mm, it took okay. me into deeper consciousness. Um, that's when uh, Bobby wanted to talk to me. He's like, "Well, the hives are Shiva energy, so these chicks are going to come." He said, Hives means Shiva. So he's mm. like, you actually tap into the Shiva energy. 
So these are consorts coming. So it was it was it was not me trying to get rituals for because then it became panic doing rituals for pussy. I didn't even know what a fucking ritual was at the time. It was just me being yeah. sincere and honest and asking for guidance and this is how it came. And people are acting like there's something wrong with getting pussy. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. then then after a while I just got tired of it, you know, and just started saying, This is this is not a... You know what I mean? Now it's just pussy. So, um, so yeah. then it turned into I had about maybe a, a whole coven. But that was way when I was later in content. Man. But see, niggas ain't really, right. they all knew each other. See, like uh, my stepson was sitting there going, we watching Love and Hip Hop, and the two chicks are fighting over the dude. He's like, just pimping. I said, that ain't pimping, nigga. They fighting over him. Pimping is when they're comfortable with the situation, nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, the and they're all in order like, and everything's good, yeah. Yeah, I was like, my witches used to hang out with each other, son. They became closer. <laughs> so, like... Yeah, you had your polygamy so thing happening all that second. All that shit boosts the ego, but then, you know, you get tired of that after a while. And um, so I tried to break up as friendly as I possibly can, so it's time for me to find mm-hmm. one, and that was Khadija. It didn't nice. sit well with a lot of the witches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The witch team don't quit on me, <laughs> so which is all good, you know. They got men and, and, and all of that, but all of that to say, it, it wasn't nothing about because I mean to be absolutely real, if you just talk about pussy already, and I still have, I got I got over, I got videotapes of fucking way before I was conscious, twosome, threesome. Yeah. So I, I, I never had to do a ritual for no pussy. That's fucking utterly yeah. ridiculous. I got threesomes on tape when I was a regular human. You know what I'm saying? Okay. For making rap records. So that that yeah. that was never a case. So it turned into this mythology that 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 I could come into your dreams and fuck all these hoes. I'm like, shit, if I could do that, I wouldn't have no time for blog talk. Y'all be limping around this motherfucker. <laughs> But um, you know, right. so so it's a bunch of bullshit. You know, it's a bunch of uh, invention shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, so, I definitely wanted to touch so, on that though. So, so I, I definitely so, found that interesting. But, but, but it's, so people ask, well, how did you do it? How did you do it? But really, it was me being sincere. You get what I'm saying? I was really right. sincere. I yeah. didn't even know where it was. And more than just the pussy, I learned so much because I was dealing with so many women. And it was a lot of goddess energy that was coming through. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, I mean, and you know what it kind of makes sense? Like, you already, yeah, now I'm saying, you already rocking good with women. It kind of makes sense that maybe the goddess would talk to you in that fashion because it's something that you could already yeah, I mean, You know what I mean? You know, like, it, that makes a lot of sense because I was basically, you know, like any other nigga, trying to get some ass, trying to get some ass, probably wouldn't have heard it any other way. And, like, it would be yeah. things like, it would be like things like, and I look on high, so there was a sister who I met from Philly. And and there was this orgy in Philly, and un, totally unrelated. Mm. And it was like, well, come, you know, come come to the orgy. I'm like, well, I'm going to come. I said, I can't fuck around in the orgy. I'm not that type of nigga. But I'll come and soak up the energy okay. smoke with the dog. So I said, and I'll see this chick while I'm out there. So I went out there, but she started asking me about St. Martha. And I was mm. dealing with St. Martha at the time. She just started asking, asking, asking. And while I'm on, while I'm going out to Philly, I reckon I said, "Oh, this bitch is this is Saint Martha coming through." And um, mm. sure enough, got to the when we got to the hotel, Saint Martha got an afro and a snake around her. She had dreads. Just one long dread was wrapped around her, and her shit was looking like an afro. I knew I was fucking Saint Martha. And I was like, mm. "God damn!" Then I said, "Shit, you need to come to the orgy with me." She's like, "Um, <laughs> she's like." I ain't on no fucking orgy. I'm like, you can get material for your book. So I, I finally got to come to the orgy. <laughs> well, I knew it. She, she had a whole bunch of niggas lined up eating spaghetti, fucking the shit out of her. I'm like, damn, damn. you want some water, sir? And um, and <laughs> then after that, Katrina happened. I knew that shit was St. Martin, mm. New Orleans. And um, wow. so, I mean, this is, it was just shit like it's happening through pussy, but shit is happening. You know what I'm saying? There's just so many of them yeah. stories. It was this and it was that, it was this and that. Oh, okay. So on one level, you're like, oh, you just getting some pussy, but you're going to do that anyway. On another level, there's a yeah. lot of shit happening, a lot of ancestors coming through. It, it, my shit mm. was getting soft. I was like, oh, that's such and such mom. I knew I was fucking such. 
my homeboy's mom's <laughs> I was like, yo, I, I can't do it. <laughs> and like, um, you just know it. You know what I'm saying? And um, so it, they were coming through that way. That, that's the exp- and see, in the spirit world, getting some pussy ain't like this motherfucker out here. This is this is all I got, and this is all I cherish. Nah, they come fucking. You know what I'm saying? The form of communication. So I, I remember seeing this. Mm. They were the fucking this decode movies. You know what I'm saying? It was just crazy. Mm. Like shit was getting turned the fuck on. Like, you know, shit was just coming online. So, it, like I said, the original core was me asking humbly. It had nothing to do with, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to use this magic, get me some pussy. Mm-hmm. I ain't need magic, get me no pussy. Take your ass to goddamn fucking Chuck E. Cheese and get some ass. Who don't know how to do that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Take yeah, your ass to goddamn sure. Wendy's and get some ass. Who, who don't know how to mm-hmm. do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, so, you know, you don't need no rituals to get no ass, you know what I'm saying? So it was like a ritual okay. to know the goddess, and that's how it how it came. So I'm sure it'll happen to anybody who's sincere, but it, it, it wasn't no method or a trick, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And then, yeah. and then motherfuckers turned, niggas made videos, Panic, Panic does rituals <coughs> for pussy, film at 11. <laughs> like, what, <laughs> Wow. You know, it's funny, you know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. Yeah. That's but I would say, if you just, just, just keep listening and studying everything. Like, um, email me at Panic Pack at Hotmail. I'll send you my links. But in those links, I got a book list. I don't know if you heard it yet. But that's where you want to be. You want to catch, you want to at least get that. See, the intellectual side is what's been built up in this society. So, it's it now becomes when we deal with our ancient information, it becomes like an Achilles heel, or it becomes it could become a blockage if it's not satisfied at this point. So we need to satisfy gotcha. it intellectually. We need to satisfy it with scholarly shit. So we need a book to be able to back up some of the mystical shit that's going to start to happen. So all the incredible shit that was starting to happen. I was able to accept it because I read books that said I know it could happen. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Earthly seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. State of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Or System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages for us to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. 